Hey there goalies, in today's tips and tricks video, we're going to be discussing full recoveries. We're going to take a look at some clips of some bad habits when it comes to full recoveries, and then we're going to discuss the good habits that you want to build up when working on this particular skill. Recovering to our feet is so important in today's game because it allows us to have a little bit of an advantage over the shooter by not already being committed in the butterfly, and by regaining our feet, we have an easier time getting back on angle to that puck. If you get anything out of this video, it's to remember to regain gain your feet at any opportunity that you have. We're going to go ahead and start with some clips of some common mistakes that goalies make when working on their full recoveries. The first big mistake that we're going to talk about is the goaltender not extending his or her hands on the push across the net. In this clip, the five-hole goal that's given up is a result of the goaltender not extending his elbows and rolling his shoulder forward in order to keep that stick flat on the ice. Yes, his stick is a little bit too large for him, but this is a really good example of not extending the hands. This next clip is a great example of probably the most common mistake goaltenders make, and that's not coming to a full stop after they complete their push. This results in the goaltender still drifting forward, so that means when they drop down, they're a little bit off balance and their chest and hands are going to fall backwards. In any type of goaltending movement, the stop is almost more important than the push itself, because if we don't come to a full stop, then there's no possible way for us to get square. Another bad habit that's extremely common is the goaltender getting too wide when they complete their push. This can happen in shuffles, T pushes, or in this case, a full recovery. While our goaltender makes a nice save here with good hand projection, you can see his feet end up much farther than shoulder width wide apart when he comes to his full stop. This can cause the goaltender to be off angle, off balance, and it also shows the shooter that you're about to drop. The final bad habit that we're going to cover today is the goaltender losing their stance and standing straight up when they come across the net. You can see in this clip as the goalie comes across the crease, he starts to stand up and relax, bringing his hands back and his chest back and opening up those holes in the net. No matter what the move is that we're doing, we want to make sure we stay engaged in our stance at all times. So let's move on to some good habits that we can do to make sure that our full recoveries are on point. The first habit is the most important habit, and that's tracking the puck. Whether it's a rebound off the far pad or it's a pass across the ice, our eyes follow it and then our hands follow our eyes and our chest. The goalie does a great job here immediately snapping his eyes towards the puck and then bringing his hands across his body. What I'm telling the goalie here after a couple of those reps is to really focus now on extending his hands out and over the puck as he comes across the net. What he could do a little bit better is rotate that chest hard towards the puck and really extend those hands out and over it and bring that glove across his body to throw his momentum the way he wants to go. He corrects it very well in the next clip, and it brings us to our next good habit, which is hand projection and rotation across the body. In both of these clips, he makes an awesome blocker save because he has his hands out and ready for that shot. On this one here, he's even forced to do another full recovery to get square for that rebound, and he does a great job getting up and squaring up on it. The reason hand projection is so important on a full recovery is because it helps throw your weight in the direction that you're trying to move to. If your hands and your elbows are tucked behind you, then that means half your weight is going the direction you don't actually want to go, making it much more difficult to cut across the blue paint. That brings us to our next habit that we want to have on full recoveries, and that is to cut through the blue paint, not across the top. Now this applies to T-pushes as well. We want to get there as the bird flies, so to speak, and it's a much, much longer distance for us to cut across the top edge of the blue paint than it is to just cut through the blue paint and hinge out to the top. What we want to be able to do as goaltenders is create almost what we call a check mark where you come back through the blue paint, you get yourself on angle, and then you use your lead foot to hinge out to the top. By cutting through the blue paint, you actually get on angle versus if you tried to cut across the half circle of the crease, you would actually never get on angle because it's almost impossible to get your chest square to the puck. So what you can actually see in these clips is our goaltender takes his lead foot and he drives that right through the blue paint, but yet he still is able to end up at the top of the crease when he finally finishes his push. This can be one of the more difficult skills to teach to young goaltenders because they are so honed in on going out towards the puck that this almost seems like a step in the wrong direction. But ultimately, it's what actually gets them on angle and gets them set up to come out to the top of the paint. The last good habit that we're going to talk about today also applies to T-pushes, and it's being able to snap that trailing pad or that push leg back into your stance. You can see in these clips that the goaltender gets a nice strong push to come across the blue paint, but what's most important and what actually makes him quicker is that he snaps his push leg right back into his ready position. 
If he were to trail that leg behind him, it would slow him down completely and he would never be able to get square quick enough to the shot. Think about trying to run with a parachute strapped to your back. You wouldn't be able to run quickly because it's dragging you, it's pulling you back. And the same can be said for dragging that trailing leg in any type of push. So just to recap some of the major points when it comes to a proper full recovery, our hands and eyes need to follow the puck at all times. Our chest has to rotate towards the puck. If you have the logo on your jersey, it should be pointed at the puck at all times. Our hands should project over the puck, so elbows out and shoulders forward. And then, most importantly, we want to travel through the blue and hinge out to the top of the paint. So think of a backwards check mark. Coaches and goalies, thank you guys for watching. I hope this video helped you out a little bit when it comes to those full recoveries and executing them properly. Also, if you're already a pro at full recoveries but need to learn a little bit more about your on-ice recoveries and your lateral movement on your knees, go ahead and click the links on this video to watch the two how-to videos that I did on those particular movements as well. Again, thanks for watching. Keep your stick on the ice, and I'll see you in the next video.